slowly but surely become an adult. I have to go share this excitement. I'll be right back. That's right. <laughs> I'll cover for it. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So everybody uh, that might be in the chat here already, I'm Freaks, and I'm going to be casting round one day-night tournament league games here with Woodhouse. And we have our uh, friendly observer, Zero Lambda, here for us today. Hey. All right. We're just going to wait on Woodhouse to get back real quick, and then we're going to start up our first game, our first series, which is uh, Fane versus Emelion. E I'm going to... I have no idea how to say that, so hopefully I got it right, or close enough. <laughs> and uh, I'll be honest here, I'm pretty excited. Um, Zero, you wanna you wanna hit that lens flare, man? I just wanna see that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting. There you go. I'm waiting. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. 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 That is awesome. All right. So, um, I can invite you over to the party here before we get started. And now we play the waiting game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For a good friend, Woodhouse. He picked a great time to go share that news. <laughs> Regardless, it is good news. Yeah, indeed. I'd be excited to get a B minus in the class. I was worried about. All right. Crap, that was totally the wrong one. Here we go. That's the right one. Okay. For those of you just tuning in, I see our viewer count went up just a little bit. Uh, I'm Freaks, and uh, I'm waiting on our co-caster, Woodhouse, to get back. I'm here. Oh, I'm you're sorry. here? I'm you're here. here. Oh, oh, you're here. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Good evening, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. All right. And we are, uh, we're going to get started here pretty soon here. All right. You're all in the party. Let's go. This is uh, game one between Fane and Imelayan on a Belshire Vestige Lighter Edition. And uh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Woodhouse, I'm you excited? I am excited. I'm, I'm liking the clan tags. Oh Always yeah. Always a fan. Day J and Nine. You can, you should, can tell they're fans, man. It should be N-Y-A-N. <laughs> N-Y-A-N? Nyan? Yep. Oh, All right, man. it's spawning down here in the bottom left-hand side of Belshire Vestige. As bottom right, bottom team. right. Right, whatever. I have my directions messed up. Orange Zerg, Fane. Fane. <laughs> and on the top left, we have uh, DJ Imelan, the purple Zerg. On the top so left here. What, yep. do, what do you think we're going to see? What do you think? Um, we're gonna see? Uh, Ling Baneling for 20 minutes. I don't think it's going to be quite 20 minutes, but I, I'm sure we're going to. Uh... Oh, God, he was random? I actually didn't catch that, too. That's pretty cool. Uh oh. He has no idea what's coming. We're, we're going to see an Overlord high five here, I think, here in like uh, five minutes. And then he'll I'm know. Gonna, I'm going to go with 10. He's going to find out in about 10. Both are. What? Oh, huh. Oh God. All right. All right. Interesting. I wonder if they're going to go ahead and do random for the next few games. We could see some pretty cool matchups here, different, different races and such. Most definitely. Now, it is important to point out these are best of fives, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they are. They're best of fives. So. When do you think we're going to see cheese? That's the that's the real pressing question at this point. Probably game three. That's my guess. Because if you're two games ahead, game Why three not? you can cheese that. You, you can you can afford to lose two games. So exactly. Yeah. We didn't have an overlord high five. I just yeah yeah they they were a little bit off track there. I'm sorry. I'm really disappointed. We do have a drone scout coming out for Emily, and uh, it, it's he's gonna road. he's gonna see a whole lot of nothing. No expansions yes, no. going down. Looks like Emelian's going to go ahead and drop the spawning pool. Emelian's dropping the spawning pool, and Fane is actually going hatch first. No spawning pool coming out of him yet. So it's going to be a little, little rough. Might be yeah, a little rough. yeah, we're probably going to see a bit of early pressure out of there. He's actually going for a gas 
So I'm I'm thinking roaches. Roach uh, roaches are quick speed, one or the other. Yeah. Maybe a combination of both. Well, we do see him actually going ahead uh, and going ahead to get that natural expansion there for Himalayan, so probably not a road rush. So you're probably right. Quick speed, I'd expect. Did I nail it again? As per <laughs> usual. <laughs> as per One out of every hundred times, that works. <laughs> and, we do have uh, a gas for Fane coming yeah. down now as well. So nice. Fane, uh, Fane actually going to be ahead economically here for the short term until that natural expansion for Emelian does get up. But Emelian is going to be out with some links here very soon. He is just continuing to... Oh, there we go. There's a couple links in production. I'm going to say he was just continuing to drone up at that point. And he's just nearing that 100 gas, and uh, I expect when we see that get to 100 that we will see uh, metabolic boosts start production. Yep, and there it is. And the links are going to pop out here. And uh, he's probably going to be putting on some early aggression, I'd think, going for that spawning pool first. Yeah, now it is interesting to note that Fane actually does have his own set of lings out. He does. If we go ahead and look at the units tab, though, Emelian is slightly ahead in drones, so actually Fane uh, sacrificed a couple larva worth of drones for those lings. He did, and uh, he's nearing 100 gas himself, and I expect we'll see metabolic boost also happen here pretty soon for Fane. Um, but yeah, like you were saying, uh, he, he, he did sacrifice some larva there to get some Ling's out early. Uh, he did scout that uh, Emelian's hatchery was a little bit later than usual. Um, however, Emelian did get those Ling's out, but he's not really doing a whole lot of them, a lot with them. He's only got two, and they're just kind of chilling there for now. I think so. they're more so for defense, because if you look back up in his base, he does have a Roach Warren. Now, Fanny yeah. does spot it, so he knows exactly what's yep. up. He drops down a spine crawler at that natural. Very good play all the way around. Mm-hmm. And uh, he hasn't started his own metabolic boost just yet, so maybe he's got something else up his sleeve. Though he is, after losing that Overlord there, he is uh, supply blocked, um, and he just fixed that right there. Spinecrawler's just about finished there, so if uh, Emelian decides to go ahead and, uh, and start Roche production here soon, and do some aggression, Fane will be a little bit uh, more protected from that, though he does have a... Four links just about finished there for, for our purple Zerg player. And uh, no roaches just yet. And actually, at this point, we don't see... Oh, and right as I get ready to say, we do see a roach worn out of Fane. Now, I haven't seen in the chat Fane is a girl, so any apologies for any oh. miscommunications All right. there. All right. Good to know. Good to know. Third hatchery coming down for Himalayan now. Now, it's interesting to see kind of the positioning of this hatchery because if you look at the map, he has the opportunity to go either in a straight line or defend the triangle. Now, yeah. defensive positions are always kind of interesting to just look at from that standpoint. But I actually think this is a smarter move, especially with a tech into, like, mutas or something like that. Indeed. And it, we also did need notice that he is going for double Evo Chamber, starting the missile attacks level one right now. So uh, Roaches will be in production here pretty soon, maybe followed by Hydralis. And we do yep. have a third base coming down for Fane as well. And uh, no Evo Chambers for Fane just yet. Though, uh, if Imolan is able to start getting that, that uh, armor as well, he will be uh, slightly ahead there. And it doesn't quite lose that Overlord there towards, uh, towards the third base. Now, that it's Queen's kind of derping. <laughs> Fane is cooling a lot of money. She must have something in, in mind. Not a, not a fast muta switch, a big muta switch. Yeah, I think that's actually what this is leading into. <laughs> either that or Infestor, um, Infestor Ling Ultra, maybe. Mm -hmm. That seems to be one of the favored builds of Zerg players anymore, is to try and tech up to that. So we'll have to see how she decides to deal with that. Now, this Overlord is going to come up here and scout. No third base over here now. I'm not entirely sure now. Fane doesn't know about the third, so she's probably thinking, okay, my opponent's just going to sit back and let me take yeah. my third. There's been really no aggression to this point, so both players kind of sitting on an equal footing as far as that goes. Yeah. Now we do see a Hydra Den coming out of Himalayan. Just about finished there, and 1-1 one -one upgrades is just about to finish as well, and the double gas also went down for Himalayan there at the natural. Going to start getting that gas production, and then we're going to see a probably a big influx of roaches and hydras here after this third base stabilizes. 
Yeah, and we do see actually double Evo Chamber. Uh, the second Evo Chamber is just about to finish up for Fane. The third for Fane is just now finishing up as well. Fane does need to take another Gas Geyser, though, to sustain whatever tech she does decide to go into. Mm-hmm. She's on uh, three three extractors right now. Um, and if she starts to, you know, pump out roaches and also go for those upgrades, and, uh, I mean, she's got a pretty decent gas pool, so, so like you were saying, there's definitely something in mind. Though we do see 30 drones in production for Fane. She's really trying to macro up at this point. Well, and really she hasn't seen anything from Himalayan that's told yeah. her otherwise that she can't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been very little to no aggression. We do see the nice drone train coming out here to that third base. Third, a little bit oversaturated, but we can forgive that, especially if she starts building spines and spores and whatnot. Yeah. And the, the Groove Spines upgrade just finished for uh, the Hydralist Den of Himalayan. And look at this. Oh, Double Back spire. of Fane's base, double spire. double spire. So definitely some heavy airplay coming in. Yeah. And we do see the, the last few extractors are going down at the natural and the third base for Fane. Again, you know, she's, she's going for the big Muta switch. We start pulling some gas here pretty soon. Yeah, and I think that's actually dire the uh, direction she's headed. Now, creep spread for Fane is actually a little bit better than her opponent right now. Uh, her her opponent some... really isn't doing a whole lot of any creep spread. He is throwing down a macro hatch, though, in the choke point to his natural. Ooh, this Overlord is going to scout the main base of Fane. I, I don't think... Is he going to catch those uh, those spires? Yes, and he yep, does. Yep, he, he does. does. Now, the question is going to be, how, how does Himalayan react to this? That's going to be the real real question. Yeah, if he doesn't react appropriately with, with that many mutas, it's going to just be devastating, especially when he's uh, going heavy roach at this point. Um, I expect we might see some spore crawlers here pretty soon. Yep. Uh, they're going down in the main base. And uh, as we know, spore crawlers are very effective against mutalists with their uh, extra damage to biological units. And um, now at some point here, we should. Two. Yeah, we should start to see there's some mutalist production coming out of Fane. Nice. Six mutas in production. And uh, two, two. Uh, missile attacks and ground current pace for Himalayan is just about finished. And I actually like this uh, response from Himalayan. You see a bunch of spore crawlers going down, especially with the biological uh, damage upgrade from those yeah. spore crawlers. All over the place. That's going to severely reduce Fane's ability to harass. However, his third base still is open. No spore, no spores uh, put down at the third just yet. However, there and they actually, go. I think these Mutas more so are just going to be used to round out this ground composition because we see level 2 melee attacks coming yeah. out of Fane. Indeed. And a fourth base coming out of Fane. So Fane actually, at this point, I don't think Fane, no, she still doesn't know that the third base is up and running. But Not yet. So nor wonder... does Imalayan. Imalayan doesn't actually see the third or the fourth base coming. Yeah. Though Fane must be suspicious, though. I mean... You've got a Zerg player who's been on two bases, at least she thinks, maybe, for 14 minutes and hasn't hit you yet. You know, it's a little bit iffy. Um, I would think that she would suspect a third base is out there somewhere. She just isn't scouting for it yet. And um, I do see... Oh, I thought I saw a drone there going for a fourth base for Imbalan, but not quite. It looks like a, he, he might be ready to head out here. I was going to say, you know, one thing looking at this now, though, we do have... Mute is headed to the third base of Imbalan. Uh oh. Oh, and gonna snipe that queen. I was gonna say hitting the one. Yeah, and, and those spore crawlers just aren't close enough to start uh, defending those drones, though. He does pull them back to the sports, which is great. And gets out of there before the hydras can do some damage. And actually not losing any mutalisks in that engagement. Yeah. <laughs> not so pretty good there. And we do see double upgrades coming out of those spires for Fane. Definitely has the gas to afford that kind of stuff. And uh, the fourth base is down and complete. Extractors are built there, but, but uh, no harvesting being done over there just yet. And uh, it looks like uh, Emmeline is going to head out and start trying to get some map control. Um, I think he realizes that you know he can engage that Muta Ball and be just fine, especially with the, the Hydro count that he has. And on 2-2 two, two upgrades with 3-3 three, three in production. Yeah, and I mean, like, the bulk of the ground force is going to have to engage that to try and soak up some of the damage of the Hydralis. I just don't know at this point with no armor upgrades if that's even going to be worth it. And yeah. you see Himalayan sitting on 2-2, two, two, whereas Fane is sitting only on 1-0. One, and 1-1 uh, one, one is just about to finish for the Flyers, for Fane's Mutalisks. 
but we're also getting level three missile attacks from yeah. the coming in here very, very soon. And that's going to help very, very much against, uh, I mean, for those hydralists against the mutilists. She's going to have to be really careful when she engages. Yeah, now, this is where the positioning battle comes in. We do see the flanking maneuver coming around here, though. Yeah, this and just doesn't look good for Fane at all. No, Fane kind of pushed back into a corner here. She is up on bases and larva, but... Oh, I was going to make just... some comment about one player being maxed out, yet they're both pretty much maxed out. Yeah, they are. Uh, that Hydra oh. is just so big. Oh, oh, attacking up the choke point using the Hydra. Oh, man. Oh, and we just see the Hydras are just falling. The Hydras are getting torn apart by these, uh, or the Mutas are getting torn apart by the Hydras, excuse me. I was going to say, what are yeah. you looking at? <laughs> I'm sorry, and then the Roaches are going to get cleaned up, and this, this is just such a bad engagement for Fane. It could have gone slightly better had Fane not suicided the Mutas into trying to take yeah. out the Hydras. Like but I was saying, it's... she needed to control those a little bit better. 3-3 three, three is just about done for Emelian, and there's a GG from Fane. So we see Emelian taking game number one. Yeah, I'm, I mean, it was a good game. I mean, both players had great macro. Um, it's just that that unit composition just wasn't what, what we should have seen against Roach Hydra. Uh, then again, you know, we didn't see a whole lot of scouting out of her, so... I'm not sure that she actually knew that that giant push was coming. Yeah, and actually, that, I think it would have been better once she uh, she established that there, you know, there was no air harassment to actually go ahead and tech into something like Ling Ultra or add some Ultralisks to that. She wasn't trying to counter air with air in that case. Yeah. All right, so uh, we're in the lobby for game two. Let's... Uh, Kick this off unless you guys need a break or something. Um, Zero, you all right? I'm good here. All right, cool. All right, let's go. Thank you to our observer tonight, Zero Lambda. Yeah, thank you. Amazing as always. Yeah, he does a great job. Oh, you guys are awesome. <laughs> Thanks. All right, so uh, whirlwind LE for game two between Fane and Imelayan. Fane so, going random. Yeah. And Fane gets Zerg again. Wonderful. Are we seeing a little bit of lag here? Maybe just a little bit. Um, my uh, my replay's frozen, man. Mine is not. Yours is not. I might have to. Let me see if I can alt tab real quick. Yeah, it's totally not working. All right. Threats. Oh, wait. Oh, there we go. All right. All right. We're good. We're good. Are, are you 42 <laughs> seconds in? <laughs> 48. Okay. Close enough. Yeah, Whatever. Close enough. Spawning here on the bottom right hand side of Whirlwind, we have Fane spawning as the yellow Zerg pieces. And on the bottom left, Emelian taking away game one, looking for uh, that second win here. The purple Zerg. And actually, we see the initial drone from Emelian coming out. Uh, going to scout the opposite direction, yet it's not going to matter because in this case, the overlords actually are going to just shake hands. Yeah, and they're going to know pretty soon <clears throat> just due to that where they have spawned. And I'll probably see a change in trajectory on that, that bro drone there. <laughs> bro. That brony. The brown. <laughs> All right. So what do you think we need to see here out of fame for this game? I don't know. I would like to see some... Uh, some more aggression out of Fane. Um, yeah. And if she decides to go into Mutas again, some more harassment earlier on. I mean, I would almost say... Yeah. I'd agree with that. I mean, Hydras are just so effective against Mutalis. Just, I mean, Emelane was great on his upgrades. Uh, yeah, I think that was another part. Is just She yeah. fell behind early with the upgrades and banked a lot of money. Both she players got like equal hatchery timings, man. Oh my god. Still, oh, spawning pool for Fane. Nice, a little bit faster. And the gas. Ooh. Even managing to squeeze out a couple of drones. Nice. We do see uh, the spawning pool drops for Himalayan now, just a little bit later. And no gas just it. yet. Say, so we should see a gas geyser here shortly. Mm hmm. There it goes. And the scouting drone is back in the base now, ready to go to work. So both these players have equal supply. But Malayne is a little bit later on his uh, spawning pool and extractor. Yeah, now, one thing I would actually like to see is somebody go kind of a cat's-ask build and go, like, five 
five hatcheries before pool. That would be fun. Brian style, Scipio. Scipio style, yeah. If any of you were watching the show matches, the day night show matches a few weeks ago, good friend Scipio played. No, most people probably won't get the reference. <laughs> yeah. Brian's not pro yet. You'd have to go back and watch some Ace HSL VODs to uh, fully understand what we're, we're trying to get out there. And you see speed in production for Fane ahead of Himalayan around this time. And I actually almost think we're going to see some more, some probably faster aggression out of Fane. Yeah. If we see aggression out of Fane, now the Lings are going to come out here to the center of the map, probably going to take the Watchtower. And yeah, I just, I think in general, Fane needed to be more aggressive, and I think she will be in this game. These Lings are just going to head right out and do some harassment on this natural, though the Queen is there, so it's not going to do a whole lot. Though yeah, I would agree with you. I think she's going to probably do be a little bit more aggressive here in game two. I feel like that's a natural reaction. You know, when you get beat in a late game, you, you just feel like, well, hey, you know, that's really tough. Why don't I just go in for the kill early on? See if I can't do some damage. We're going to see these links here try to do a little bit of shenanigans, but they're going to be uh, rejected by that queen there. So like it's now we do have eight links here. Enforcement. Yep. And six links just about to pop. Yeah, <laughs> micro putting the, uh, the, the injured link in the back. Nice. We get the surround on that queen. One link down. Feelings down. Mm -hmm. And yeah, actually, speed. Fane on the positive end of this engagement. There yes. are more lanes in production, but Fane going to get a couple of drone kills over here. Yeah, and speed just finished. So temporarily, these uh, lanes are going to be a bit more effective than uh, Emily's lanes. See uh, if she can micro well enough. Yeah, She's at least for the time being, and that's only like a five or six second advantage. But Fane going to go ahead and just back right up. Yeah. Speed just does finish for Emilan here. And actually Fane going for another attack. <laughs> wow, that's actually, a lot of links. <laughs> that is a lot of links, but there are some Bane links yeah. after the morphing for it. We have, have a main production. That could, be, that could be scary. We don't see a Bane link nest for Fane, so it looks like she's just content to go for straight up links at this point. And so, now Emilan does know that those links are sitting there. If you look yeah. at his vision, the Overlord sees everything that's going on. Ooh, more Bane links and oh! Man, that, that's got to hurt. That does. Yeah. That probably hurts a lot. Yeah. That, that just destroyed so many uh, so many Zerglings there. I actually want to check that out. And 31 units lost for Fane at this point. Man. And Fane actually not producing units at all. More so trying to focus on microing those. Yeah, she's just banking those minerals over 1,000 at this point. I'd like to see, you know, just possibly an expansion and some spines put down. Off of that mineral bank, so hopefully. I would almost say she could go mass expand here. Mm-hmm. Then we do see a few more links coming. Or a couple, well, and a, by a couple, I mean a few dozen. Yeah, and Land's going to be aggressive here and, and uh, into Fane's natural before these spines are done. Going to get some drone kills here pretty soon. We do have six sets of lanes in production. Some nice. Just, I don't think it's going to be enough, though. Let's, let's see if these spines are able to hold this off. They're just about finished, and they just go straight up. And these links just right into the main. That's painful. The 22 links are about to pop for Fane. And uh, she's going to be able to clean that up in the main. But we have another wave of links from Inalayan streaming across the map right into the natural. But at this point, you have links sitting down there, and you have spines to back them up. I think Fane is going to be just fine in this position. Yeah, we can see he decides to back up at least a little bit to get those Bane links up. And yeah, with those banlings, that's scary. That is a pretty scary engagement. Now we do see kind of a little micro battle going on here. Now, Emelian does need to protect those banlings. He does have but, even more links coming to reinforce. I mean, uh, if you look at the income tab, you know, if they're going to do this forever, Emelian will come out on top just because he has 26 harvesters to Fane's 15. I think Fane, in a couple of spots there, just kind of stopped. Yeah, I, I that sounds really intuitive, but I think it was more of a matter of, oh shit, that didn't work. Yeah. And the Bailey's just gonna bust on the spine. Oh, he's just got plenty of them there. Oh that's man, that, that is not good at all. Yeah, that's the GG for Fane. And Emelian takes away game two quite a bit quicker than game one. So, Fane in a pretty rough spot right now, and as we were talking about earlier, yeah. Is this the game that Emelian cheeses, or is this the game that Emelian just goes for the jugular? <laughs> I guess we'll find out here. 
Loading up game three. Uh, excuse my uh, squeaky chair. Sweet. All right, so game three on Polar Night Ladder Edition. Oh boy, Polar Night. Fane uh, going random once more, and the Milan picking the good old Zerg. The Polar Night, we have to get this established early. It's just top and bottom. Yeah, There's yeah, I was going to say. This is the only map where it's straight top and bottom. No bottom left, no bottom right. Spawning up here on the top of the map as the yellow Terran pieces this game, we do have Fane down 0-2 in this series. And our purple Zerg once again, Emelian. The good old uh, GLHF, no hard feelings from either player there. And uh, man, it, it's really hard to kind of... Uh, predict what Fane's going to do at this point because, you know, she is playing random. We haven't seen her play Terran yet, so... I was going to say, as a, as a Terran player, what would you expect to see in this position? I would expect to see a fairly quick expansion following... Um, I like to do uh, Factory earlier on to get those Widow Mines out and use those for defense mm -hmm. because, I mean, earlier on, your opponent's going to have Zerglings and possibly some Banelings and such. Um... So Widow Mines are pretty good at uh, defending expansions and such, so I think she would be safe going into, you know, Barracks Factory into an expand. Kind of like the good old Wings of Liberty build where you actually built uh, Hellions instead of Widow Mines. Oh, Wings of Liberty. What? <laughs> Just reminiscing, I'm sorry. <laughs> Joan is going to come up here and scout, though, going to see no expansion quite yet, and actually at this point at least going to see... Not only the race, but be able to get in and get a good scout of what's going on. Yeah, yeah. And that's a good call by him to get the scout out early so that he realizes, um, you know, what, what his opponent's race is. And I know from personal standpoint that it's really frustrating playing against a random player, especially if you can't get the, the scout early enough. And it, the gas is going to finish there for Fane, so we're probably going to see a factory. That's my expectation. Factory or Reaper opening? Yeah, I mean, that's a totally legitimate opening, too, here in Heart of the Swarm. Reapers are pretty damn powerful. Though, you know, with Queens, it is it is tougher to uh, Reaper open against Zerg as opposed to, uh, to Terran. So, uh, yep, we just see a, a Marine coming out there. So I think you're actually going to be right. I think we're going to see the factory. Now the expansion for Himalayan is down as well. And that, that Marine is rallied out front of the barracks, in front of the wall. I don't know if that's intentional or not. One thing I would kind of like to see is use that Marine to uh, pick off the Overlord that's standing out here. Because right now, that's really kind of the eyes and ears of in what Yeah. I'm not sure if she knows it's there. Let's check her vision. No, she doesn't see that Overlord there. So uh, Imelayan is able to, to just hang out there, and he'll see whatever comes out of the ramp. And uh, I'm assuming he'll probably use that later on to you know check out what other buildings are in the main of fane <laughs> yeah unintentional rhyme there sure it was actually you're right dude there is a reaper coming out there though she did she, she put a tech lab down i'm not I, entirely sure if that wasn't a miscue yeah i don't think you need you don't need the tech lab anymore for reapers as you did in wings of liberty so maybe that's just uh, a misplay or something like that um, I mean, the other the other explanation is that she's just making one. Yeah, and then gearing up for stim pack and combat shields. And again, this is a replay, guys. So you know, the chat you see here is, uh, you know, apparently they had some issues. And uh, the Reaper's not going to go straight for in the lane space. He's just going to hang out there on the ramp at this point. And, and there, finally, she does scout the uh, the nice. overseer. Or overlord. And, and there goes the command center as well. Yay. And another Reaper in production. So she might be devoting to this opening. Yeah, and actually the more I think about it, the more I think the... And there's a the factory was... that finished back there. Uh, kind of hidden there. That's interesting play. A Reaper opening. Maybe to make your opponent not expect a factory so much and then hiding that factory. Maybe that's what she's using the gas for. She's got double gas there, finished in the main. Now she does have to be careful because it is engaging the queen. Queens do beat reapers. <laughs> not, not when you have five of them. It's true. 
Five yeah. of them, and then combat drugs on top of everything else. Yeah. And there's the reactor going down for Fane, so I don't know if we're going to see Widowmine production or Hellion production. One of the two, of course. Another barracks going down for Fane as well. And this Reaper in the middle of the map is going to get caught. Oh, and he dies. So now we have eight lings <laughs> on the way. The emergency bunker is nowhere near complete. Yeah. Fane She's well. probably going to have to lift off that command center. And bunker's not going to finish. That Marine dies. And I want to see her put the supply depot up and get the cancel on the bunker. And it doesn't uh -oh. happen. Uh oh. The SCVs are pulled. <laughs> Engaging with the SCVs. Oh, shit. It's a bad day to work for Fane. Ouch. <laughs> and one Hellion is finished. Now, one Hellion, if controlled correctly, could probably clean up all of these lanes. Yeah, they don't have speed just yet, so let that. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's a little bit of micro there. Ah, uh, there's speed, and that Hellion's gonna fall. And she needs to put up her to bloody bow. There she goes. <laughs> just the main. Sadly, she is gonna lose that command center. She could have lifted it off, but that's that's okay. The heat of she does, and I think it's oh. gonna burn. Oh, it's gonna it's gonna burn. No. <laughs> And the supply depot is being worked on. But this this uh, steadfast marine is going to take care of these zerglings, maybe. And is she going to get the repair? Oh, oh, oh she gets oh, it. Oh my god. So, so close. <laughs> and, uh, so meanwhile, during all this, MLN decided to go ahead and uh, get a third base as well. So, dropping the double Evo chambers as well. Just trying to, you know, once you're ahead, get more ahead. He, he canceled, or denied, rather, his opponent's natural base. And so, uh,. He is definitely ahead at this point. Um, 34 harvesters to 18, you know, that just tells the story on its own. And uh, we do see the Widow Mine. It just came out for Fane. Probably uh, you know, two Hellions coming out of the factory, so uh, not another Widow Mine. However, I think Widow Mines would be ideal in this situation to protect from more Ling run buys. Yeah, I agree. So was that. Ooh, yeah, I guess that Zerling was blocking the landing for Fane, though she can drop the command center now. It's just kind of chilling there. There we go. Nice. Both players actually with quite a bit of bank. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just because, uh, you know, Enelan was so focused on doing as much damage as he could with those Zerglings, and as, you know, as such, Fane was trying to defend it just as well, trying to micro. Um, it looks like she's just going to... Probably just uh, continue to go biomech at this point. Uh, combat shield is just starting. Stim pack is not quite done. Um, several more barracks going down. Actually, only two. Sorry about that. <laughs> two is several. Depends on who you talk to. And uh, more Ling is going to run by and destroy that bunker. Uh -oh. This is just a repeat of what we saw before. But this time, oh, just a nice little mind connection. Damn, what a line. See if she lifts off the command center faster this time. Come on! Are you are you pounding your L key? Is that what the, the pounding is over there? <laughs> I am pounding on my desk because I was like really excited for her to uh, lift that command center off. Not mean. And uh, those barracks did finish there in the main. Uh, no tech labs or reactors on those just yet. Though we do see uh, one one is just about finished. One missile attacks, not melee. So I'm assuming he's going to do a transition into either uh, roaches or hydralis. Probably roaches, I would expect against Terran. I was going to say I would assume we'd see some sort of roach, um, roach hydra place supported by banelings. Mm -hmm. And as That's you say that, ten banelings in production and the baneling speed upgrade is on the I was way. Say because banelings, I mean, like in any matchup, are just not only fun to watch but very very powerful. Yeah. And it is so frustrating as a Terran player to handle Banelings, unless you've just got a critical mass of Marauders to, or tanks to soak up Baneling hits, um, or just Amazing Micro, which I do not have. And now we have the mass move out across the map. Banelings still do not have speed, although the Centripetal Hooks are on the way. They're about 50 seconds out as we speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, more and more Hellions being produced for Fane and Marines as well. Combat shields is done, but there is no stim pack, so I think this is uh, going to be a pretty devastating push. Honestly, you know, I think those, like I said before, those Hellions should just be replaced with the Widow Mines at this point. 
for base defense, they're phenomenal, and we don't see any overseers on the map. Or another transition I would like to see is possibly hell bats. That would also be good. Beefy hell bats. And yeah, looks Himalayan. like yeah, Himalayan did catch these hellions over here, though engaging right up the blinks, and we don't see. Oh, it, maybe. Get one. Mm, come on. Shoot! Shoot! Get him. No, oh, she's just gonna retreat. Uh, right. Oh, I thought we were gonna get two. Yeah. <laughs> and Banling speed is finished there. I always love watching Banlings roll across the map. So 2-2 two -two upgrades is about halfway done, and the Roach Horn just now finishes. And that is going to be pretty effective against these Hellions, considering we don't have any Marauders on the map. Yeah, there's really nothing out on the map to deal with any sort of heavy armor. And even for um, Himalayan, if that Hellion slash Hellbat count gets yeah. really, really high, that's going to be really rough to deal with until <clears throat> and get some Roaches out there. Fane is supply blocked for now, which really sucks considering her supply is sitting at 65 and uh, Emelaine is at 117 supply. So this isn't looking very good for our yellow Terran player up here. Um, but what will happen remains to be seen. And uh, the roaches, 15 roaches in production. We already have six on the map. Or actually nine, 10, 11, 12. Nope. Just finished just up there. The is this the final push? I feel like it, this it is might the be. Final. It might be the final push. There are no tanks and no widow mines. I just don't think. Oh, there, there's another widow mine. She just moved the single widow mine up to the front lines. <laughs> nice. But Better positioning. Nice. Those Hellions are there to protect the SCVs and get repaired. It's the pit stop. There you go. Escar and pit stop. Actually, Himalayan. There we go. Finally moving out. I don't know whether that's. Yeah, it's just back to the other watchtower. So Emelian actually at this point just content to get map control now. It's important to note that he does have 5k, 2k in the bank, so he could pretty much do whatever he Yeah, wants. he could remax easily, provided that he has the larva. You know, he could drop a macro hatch here or just a fourth base at that point and uh, be able to remax his army in the, fan, the slight chance that fan, he Fan, don't it. do it, fan. Yeah, yeah these, these Hellions are going to get it. It's, it's, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, that's not good. No. No. All the Hellions are dead. I was going to say, and here comes the final push, but then Emelayan again just going to walk. Fane has a siege tank, man. Fane has a siege tank. Fane has a siege <laughs> Siege tank up here on this uh, the corner of the main here overlooking the natural. I actually like that position. Going to save the day. Honest. You have a nice wide arc that covers the front, yet... Possibly could move it forward a little bit, maybe get a little more out in the center. But yeah. At the same time, she's kind of protecting it from being hit. So. I, I think this is going to be the last push we see. And then talking with the other star point out, tank is up on the high ground. Oh, no. oh, oh, this push just oh. devastating. The front lines of fame. Marines and Marauders, Hellions, Widowmines, all just getting annihilated. And there's a GG for with the GG. So with that, Emelian takes the series 3-0. 3-0. 3-0. I feel like she played Zerg a bit better. Um, you know, Taryn is. As people in the chat were saying, though, random, by far the hardest race ever. Because <laughs> you have to know Definitely. all three matchups and all three mirrors. It's 